The churches are closed, church income is down, and the bishops have clashed with the government. It's an uncertain time for the Church of England, and like other pillars of society, it's likely to face questions over how it's conducted itself in recent months. We're in Liverpool, in the shadow of its vast Anglican cathedral. Its mighty doors have been closed since March. This is the biggest church in the country. It can hold three and a half thousand worshippers standing up. It's high time the churches were reopened, say many. But how and when might this occur? And what might the church look like after the pandemic in any case? We asked the Bishop of Liverpool about the lockdown of churches. Uh, a number of people regretted that and, and, and a number of... Uh, Including lay, yourself? Uh, my, no, my own view was that, that the foundation of Christian faith is that individual people have a priceless value before God. And therefore, if we're going to take risks, let's err on the side of safety. Why did you feel it was appropriate to speak out with other bishops about the activities of the Prime Minister's advisor, the trips he went on? If, if our government is to tell us to do things which are personally painful, and thousands of people have risen to that challenge, some of them, the meaning of that is that they've not been with their loved ones when they died. If, if that kind of challenge is put out there and the nation responds positively, then I think the government has a responsibility to live up to that trust and to communicate as openly and as honestly as possible. The rector of Liverpool, Crispin Paling, has the parish church of St Nick's to himself. It's normally one of the busiest in the city, but worship has moved online for now. Government guidance has suggested it'll be next month at the earliest before churches like St Nick's can reopen to the laity. There have been moments when all of us have felt frustration with the rules that have been given by the bishops or by the government. Um, at the moment, I think we need to, to try and focus on the point in the story where we are. As the story develops, then we can look back and we can make some judgments, uh, but we also need to continue looking forward to when we can take that next step, when we can open our building, how we can enable people to worship whilst keeping safe. A sign of the times in these petitions for prayer. Many miss the familiar surroundings of their parish church. But others, including some clergy, feel rather less attachment to the bricks and mortar. This was once a Presbyterian church in Liverpool, now abandoned. Churches can be costly to maintain and perhaps forbidding to younger people. Some within the C of E have even spoken of the prison of church buildings and say Anglicans should emerge from the pandemic with fewer of them. So we pray for those who walk in the corridors of power. May they always consider those they represent, make decisions with courage and integrity. Perhaps Phil Saltmarsh's ministry is the way forward. He's vicar of St Aidan's, or he would be if the church hadn't been pulled down a few years ago. Now he's offering virtual services, including communion, from a cafe in a parade of shops in Speak, a deprived neighbourhood in Liverpool. What we've seen through live streaming of our church services on, on Facebook is that more people are engaging with us, um, asking for prayer, um, or even just wanting to help support the food bank uh, in different ways. And so um, even if people aren't part of the gathered church, they want to be connected and involved in some way. While Liverpool's churches are closed, they're far from idle. The biggest food bank in the city operates from the neoclassical portico of St Bride's, where they provide more than 250 bags of groceries a day. And the resources of the church which you want to go into caring for the people and serving the community can go into supporting ageing buildings. Heritage people wouldn't agree. They think it's a wonderful heritage programme, and it is a wonderful heritage programme, but uh, we want the resources of the church and the people to go to serve the community. But back at Our Lady and St Nicholas on Liverpool waterfront, we met Janine Hughes, a regular worshipper and a food bank donor. She, for one, can't wait for St Nick's to be open again. For me personally, I, I love to come. 
it makes me feel better. Well, it's not just a building, it's a life for people, isn't it? You know, you can say that about shops, do we really need them? That's a completely different thing, isn't it? This is, you know, God, isn't it?